All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this session. This would be a continuation of the session we did yesterday on, on mean, median, mode, so-called topics of data handling. Today, we will finish this chapter by picking up uh, bar graphs. All right. So uh, who do we have here? We have Arka here. We have Shruti, Rishikesh. Hari, Hari Priya, Anita, hello to everyone. Good afternoon. I hope you guys are having a good day so far. Uh, Arka says, good afternoon. Hi, Arka. Hi, Shweta. Hi, Hari. Uh, Shubhanto. All right. Thank you, Shweta, for letting me know that I'm audible and visible. Well done. <laughs> There's no need for me to ask this question every time now. Awesome. So I'm doing good. I hope you guys are doing great as well. Come on, let's let's begin the session. Uh, this is going to be a fairly simple one, like like uh, the session last time. So let's start off by first uh, reminding you on the Telegram channel. Any new students who are joining us through this video, I've got to let you know that uh, we have a Telegram channel as well. The link to this could be found in the descriptions box because on the Telegram channel, uh, uh, you know, you get these session notes with the instructor's handwriting. Other exciting things are also shared, like the revision questions, quizzes, homework questions, session updates. So make sure you join that Telegram channel to not miss out on any updates. Okay, now, this is how the session is going to flow. I'm going to begin by first recalling whatever we have covered in the session yesterday, yeah, or, or prior session. And then we will have a look at the, the bar graph. How do we draw a bar graph? Then we will check out what a double bar graph is and we will wrap the session by looking at a very simple, exciting topic of probability. Awesome. So come on, let's, let's first recall whatever we have covered earlier. Now you remember, you know, the television remote example. Yeah, I hope you guys do that. So I, I gave you some statistics, right, which were collected from a survey, like 50% of the time, uh, a lost television remote control is found in between the cushions of the sofa, 8%, maybe the bathroom it was, 2% of the time it's even found in the car, right? So that was data. Right. And then we also had a look at the ratings for an app, uh, uh, the ratings for the phone, maybe whatever you're looking to buy. And then we did some uh, exciting operations on that. Right. So data, as you guys know by now, is nothing but a collection of numbers. And when raw data, we organize it. We've seen how organization helps us in understanding the data well and then derive some useful information or intelligence out of it. So we've seen it, how, how a simple way we can convert raw data into organized data. Another example has been given you here with, with Lego bricks. So right, this one is unorganized and then we organize it based on the dots. So these are the Lego bricks with four dots and these are the Lego bricks with, I believe, eight dots, right? Fairly simple. Next. We covered these concepts, yeah. We've seen uh, how do we calculate mean? What is mean? The sum of all the observations divided by the total number of observations. Like to give you an example, let's say uh, uh, 5, 9, uh, 11, 13, 14. Let's say I want to figure out the mean of this data. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna add up all these numbers, 5 plus 9 plus 11, plus 13, plus 14, and then I would divide it by the total number of observations are there. So how many? One, two, three, four, five. So there are five observations, I divide that by five. So mean or, or, or average, it's also called as average, right? And then we studied median. Median is what? Nothing but the middle term. But you've also seen that first we need to arrange the data in an ascending or descending order, and then the middle number is going to be mean. Like uh, here the middle number is three, but sometimes what happens? you have two numbers in the middle, like if I talk about one, two, three, four, five, six, then these are the two numbers in the middle. Then in that case, what do we do? We take the average of this. So three plus four by two, and we get 3.5 as the median. And then we also had a look at mode, right? Mode was what? Fairly simple. The observation which repeats the most. That was mode. And then we checked out range, which is simply the highest value minus the lowest value. Right, so all of this we have covered in the last session. Now today, what we are going to study is how do we take that data and represent it visually? All right, so so far, uh, all of you are, are understanding whatever we've covered, right? So let's, let's take this data. 
okay so what what is this data talking about you've got some cricket players out here right so you've got oin morgan aaron finch rohit sharma jason roy and chris gale these are the countries that they represent and these are the number of sixes that they have hit now this data if i were to simply represent it visually right i can do it like this yeah but then using this i'll be only able to say that uh, yeah oin morgan has hit the most number of sixes and Chris Gale, Jason Roy have hit an equal number of sixes, uh, but then I don't know anything about the numbers yet. You know, that's, that's the only thing I can say. Using only this, using only this, I can say, as I said, Oin Morgan has hit the most number of sixes and, and Jason Roy uh, and, and Chris Gale have hit an equal number of sixes. Numbers are needed, yes? So a better way of representation follows from here. We do that using bar graph okay we do that using bar graph and this is what bar graph is visual representation of data using rectangular bars um, i'm sure you guys can see the rectangular bars here right so these are going to be your rectangular bars now you have to keep two things in mind the width of these rectangular bars have got to be the same this is what i mean when i say width okay it has got to be the same you can't have one bar thicker or thinner than the other the width of the bars the width of bars has to be equal. Are we on with this? Yes, Sharfi, I, I remember all of you. Uh, okay, Arka, all right. So I just want to take some time in reading what you guys have done there. Uh, Sweta has given us a definition of, of a bar graph, which is a pictorial representation of numerical data using bars of uniform width drawn. Yes. It can be either horizontal or vertical. Like here, we've taken the example of vertical bar graph, but bars can also be drawn in a horizontal way. Okay, I'm doing good. Anik, uh, I hope you're doing great as well. Yes, we all remember you, of course. All right, so coming back to this, what did I say? The width of the bars has got to be equal. You have to keep this in mind. You can't have some bars which are thicker or some bars which are narrower than the other. And the separation between the bars here also have to be the same okay keep these two things in mind first thing is what the width of the bars has got to be the same and the separation between these bars that you see rectangular bars has got to be equal as well and now uh, it becomes easy for you to uh, uh, you know say this right because on the y-axis you have the number of sixes and on the x-axis you have the name of the place now you don't need this data at all Right? Unlike last time, we can say how many sixes Aaron Finch has hit. Right? So it is going to be here. So somewhere between 15 and 20, once you have these you know, notations there, it will be very easy for you to say that Aaron Finch has hit 18, uh, uh, you know, Owen Morgan has hit uh, 22 sixes and so on and so forth. So this is very simple. Very, very simple. Okay? What happens if the bars are not equal is what Shweta says. Somebody may, may understand it in another way. You know, they may say since this bar is thicker, it may represent something else. Okay, so we want to represent that in a uniform way. Assuming that all of these bars are representing the same data. And that is about the number of uh, up sixes in this case. You know, if, if another bar is thicker, some are narrower, people may interpret it in different ways. Okay, I hope you've I've answered the question. Yes, uh, Arivan Pandit also says that bar graphs are very easy. As I told you, these are very simple. Once we get to the problems, you'd see how simple this is going to be. Yeah, so these are some notations, right? As I said, this is called as the uh, y-axis representing frequency of data, which is here. This represents categories. And this thing is going to be very important. Okay, you always, whenever you are being asked to draw the bar graph, you have to mention this one unit. Like in this case, this is representing one unit. And how many sixes is it representing? Five. It depends. It depends on the data that you can select. Okay. So how am I going to, you, you're going to be needing this bar graph, by the way, to, to draw the bar graphs very carefully. All right. So uh, I'm going to draw two bars and then you will understand it. All right. So let's say this is how I draw on Morgan's data. Yeah. So this was 22, right? So I'll pick one, two, three, and then this is it. So this is going to be that. Aaron Finch is also going to be same. Make sure the separation between them is the same. Yeah, so this has got to lie on 16, 17, 18. Yeah, so this is how you can go ahead and come up with your bars. You will need a, a graph paper to draw these kind of bars. 
okay ayushi says when are we going to learn pictographs pictographs are going to be very simple you know if you understand bar graphs you've automatically understood pictographs okay for today's session we are focusing only on bar graphs and double bar graphs as you will see it will come up later next all right so we've understood what a bar graph is how we need to draw it yes i know my line is not straight is what shruti says come on shruti give me some slack i'm not using a ruler here so my lines are not going to be straight but when you draw it your lines have got to be straight so use a, a, a ruler right i'm sure you you understood that cool so here are some questions i'm sure you guys have understood how to interpret bar graphs now go ahead tell me the answers to these questions come on up uh, up uh, Say that out in the comments. Who's the tallest boy, and what is his height according to the given bar graph? I'm sure you guys can uh, uh, see this visually. Yeah, I hope this is clear. Cool. So come on, tell me who's the tallest boy, and what is his height according to this bar graph? What is the answer? Shorya says Ram. Okay, a lot of you are saying Ram. What is his height, by the way? Height can also be up, uh, up. Uh, you know, taken from this. So Ram is the tallest boy. What is his height? Height is going to be how much? Five unit. Come on, tell me the unit as well. Read this. What five? Five what? Centimeters, meters, what? Five feet. Yes, that's the proper way to answer this question. So first thing, tallest boy. So you look out for the tallest bar. Which is the tallest bar out of all the bars here? This one is the tallest, right? This is the tallest or the longest bar. And who does it belong to? It belongs to Ram. So the tallest boy. in the class is ram well done now i also wanted the height well done like you guys have said here so when the top of the bar make sure you do know where is it falling on the y axis so this is falling here right it's falling on what number here 5 and unit has also been given here feet so the height is going to be 5 feet well done so you've understood it is it necessary to color the bars um, it will look good if you can do that you know if you can carry some color pencils and colors color up the bars but each bar same color again you know keep that in mind but uh, even if you don't it it's not going to matter too much rahul says why have you made me the second tallest my name is rahul or oh, these names were just just you know coincidentally I, i never had these things in mind okay so who's going to be the shortest in the class now who's the shortest very good rohit is going to be the shortest and what is his height approximately i know this would be hard for you to see uh, on the screens so uh, the shortest one in the class is going to be rohit right this is the shortest bar and this is falling on what it's falling let me just uh, check this out it's falling somewhere which is more than 3.5 i can go ahead and call it 3.6 or 3.7 let's just take 3.75 feet okay but these things will be clearly mentioned and in some cases you can approximate as well because it's hard for you to up uh, up uh, you know count because zooming it all and doing that 3.8 also i take it you know not not bad not bad 3.5 also works because it is slightly more than 3.5 is what i feel so it could be 3.6 3.7 closer to that okay we've understood this as well cool so next question coming up for you All right. So this time, what you need to do here is arrange the students of class seven in descending order. You guys know what descending order is? Uh, descending order. What is descending order? Starting from the biggest to the smallest. Descending, right? Going down. So biggest to smallest. Come on, tell me. Uh, order of their marks which have been shown. Again, these names are purely coincidental. Okay, uh, we we didn't think much before we took these names. Okay. So which is going to be uh, the highest? descending order means what you you arrange from the biggest to the smallest so who got the highest marks here the highest marks saloni has got it right this is the longest bar so saloni comes first s a l o n i all right after saloni who who comes ananya right ananya is second ananya is second and then well done amit and after that uh, shivang right we have amit who's third and last we have shivang now you can also go ahead say what their marks are right like saloni here is going to have 100 because it's falling on 100 there right and ananya where is ananya ananya is here so this looks like somewhere between uh, 85 to 90 right so i can go ahead and say this is 85 amit is going to be here amit 
is going to be 75 and Shivang is between 50 and 75. So we can go ahead and call that maybe nearly a 60. Okay. All right. So this is what it is going to look like. So arrange in the descending order. Descending order simply means you start from the biggest and you go on to the smallest. As simple as that. So we've understood it. Yes, come on, let's let's pick up some other examples as well. As I said, today's topic is going to be a fairly simple one. We would be studying bar graphs, double bar graphs and a topic of probability. And that's about it. Cool. Let's move on now. Okay, your turn. Which month has the highest sale and the lowest sale? Find half of the difference of highest and lowest sales. So come on, first figure out the month which has the highest sale and the lowest sale. I hope the numbers are fairly clear here. Yes. So come on, go ahead, type out your answers in the comments there. Uh, the month with the highest sale. So you're looking at the tallest bar, the tallest bar. Well done. It's going to be February. So highest sales, highest sales is Feb. Yes, like, like you guys have answered, very good. And um, the lowest one looks like April, right? This is the, the shortest bar. So lowest sales, lowest sales is going to be April. Very good. So we've figured out the first part of the data there. Which month has the highest sale and the lowest sale? Feb has the highest, April has the lowest. Find half of the difference of the highest and lowest sales. Okay, so first let's find... Uh, what is the highest sale? So in February, how much? This looks like 4,000 and April looks like 1,000. Half of the difference. So what is the difference by the way? The difference of the highest and the lowest. So 4,000 minus 1,000. So this is how much? 3,000. The difference is 3,000. Right? But we need half of the difference. So difference is 3,000. Half of difference means means what? half of 3000 which is going to be 1500 well done awesome you guys have the correct answer there good job ayushi we have aruna shruti hari shweta ramya srishti pathak adhiraj all of you are giving the correct answer ananya has given us the definition as well she's even gone on to double bar graph which we will come about to next Okay, there was one question I couldn't see there, but yeah, two types of bar graphs. Okay, if I were to tell you, I think that's what you were asking. There is the, the bar graph and then the double bar graph. That's it. Okay, come on. Let's move on and check out what the next uh, uh, thing is going to be. Arithmetic mean of the number of t-shirts with Raj and Anthony. You, you, you guys recollect what arithmetic mean is? What is arithmetic mean? Average, right? So figure out uh, how many t-shirts does Raj have? Figure out how many t-shirts does Anthony have. Okay. So first tell me how many t-shirts does, does Raj have here? Raj here is going to have. This is the bar for Raj, right? The top of the bar is falling on 20 on the number of t-shirts axis. So Raj is going to have 20 t-shirts. What about Anthony? Anthony is here. This is the bar for Anthony. And it looks like it's falling exactly between 10 and 20, right? So I can go ahead and take that as a 15. Yes. So Anthony has 15 t-shirts, right? Raj has 20. Anthony has 15. Anirudh says 16. What's Anirudh? You know, not going to be a big issue because the numbers are fairly small. I understand it. You may not be able to zoom in and, and check out what the accurate number is going to be. Okay, now we need what? The arithmetic mean. How do we figure out the mean? Mean is what? These are the observations that I have. I have 20, I have 15. So sum of all observations divided by total number of observations. How many observations I have? I have only two. One for Raj, one for Anthony. So divide that by two. That's all. Well done. 17.5 is the correct answer. Adhiraj Hari, uh, 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 Shorya has also given us that, followed by Shruti. Very good. So this was fairly simple, right? Uh, Anvi also agrees to that. So this is going to be uh, 35 divided by 2, giving me, I believe, 17.5. So the arithmetic mean of the number of t-shirts, which Raj and Anthony are going to be 17.5. Yes, Shweta, I understood this was going to be a little difficult to read, especially if you guys are watching this on the phone, because, you know, you may have to zoom zoom in and then check out the exact number, but, but never mind, you know. As long as you've understood what bar graph is, 
and how you most importantly how you are going to interpret the data presented in the bar graph I'm fine with it because that that's all you need that's all you need awesome good good you all ha are having the correct answer very good come on now let's let's move on and check out double bar graph so double bar graph is is a like bar graph okay but you are representing two bits of data here okay like like let's take this example visual representation of two data sets okay like have a look at the first data set here this is the grades okay a plus a and b plus and these are the number of male players who have got it all right and these are the same grades but these are the number of female players so we can represent we don't need two bar graphs for that we can combine these two and put this information in a single bar graph we just have to make sure we do this like the pink color here the pink colored uh, uh, bars are going to represent male players data and this yellowish mustard uh, uh, color bars are going to represent the female players data that's all Ayushi says she's actually zoomed the screen and measured with the help of the scale. Ah, cool, cool. Okay, so you, you understand this, right? So this is going to be what? This is going to represent the data for males because it is given to you here in, in the bar graph. Like this pink color, salmon color, whatever this is, this is going to represent the data for male players and this mustard color that you see is going to represent the data for female players. And the interpretation is, is pretty much the same. You just need this color code, that's it. All right? You just need the color code. As long as you have the color code, it, it is pretty much the same thing like a regular bar graph. Okay, so come on, I'm going to bring a question and let's see how many of you can answer this. Okay, so the, the given double bar graph shows the wheat production of two farmers, Ajay and Raghav. In which year did they produce equal amount of wheat? So this color here stands for Ajay. Please make sure you understand the notation of the colors given. Okay, and this color stands for the wheat production by Raghav. So in which year did they produce an equal amount of wheat? Equal amount means what? Well done, answer, good. You guys have, are saying 2017, I think I agree to that. Because for the year 2017, we can observe that both the bars are of the same height. Right? It doesn't happen for any other year. Very good. Well done. 2017 it is. The correct answer is 2017. Because for the year 2017, the length of both the bars used to represent the production of wheat for Ajay and Raghav are of the same height. Well done. Hari says he answered it first. Cool. I was the first to answer, says Anya there. <laughs> awesome. So let's see. The, I'm going to give you the next one and let's see who answers this next. So this was simple. You've understood why as well. All right. So this time the data is the same. The question has changed. The question is who produced more wheat in five years and by how much? Now this is going to take some time. Okay. This is going to take some time. So you guys have to decode it for every year. So Ajay and Raghav, like for the year 2015, Ajay produced how much? 25 and, and Raghav produced 30. So this is 25, this is 30 plus plus. For the year 2016, Ajay produced 30 and then Raghav produced 25. 2017, both produced the same amount of 30. Okay, and then 2018, uh, Ajay produced 25 and Raghav produced 35. And for the last year, 2019, Ajay produced 40 and then Raghav produced 30. Okay, so all right, so you're saying Ajay is the answer who produced more? By how much is Ajay winning? By how much? So you need to have a total count. Okay, by how much is Ajay more than Raghav? So add up all the numbers. All right. Look, these numbers, you've understood it, right? Like what does this 25 represent? 25 is the data for the year 2015. Look, this is what 25 is. Let me just write the numbers here. So this is 25. This is 30. This is 30 and this is 25. This is 30 and this is 30. This stands for 25 and this stands for 35. This is 40 and this is 30. So you add the data for Ajay and Raghav. Ajay adds up to how much? 30, 30, 60, 60, 40, 100, 150 is what Ajay is. 
30, 30, 30, 90. 90 plus 60. Okay, both have produced an equal amount is what I'm getting. Yes, very good. Equal. Well done. I hope my number addition is, is the correct thing here. 30, 30, 30, 90. 35, 25 is 60. Yes, 90 plus 60 is 150. Yeah. So who produced more wheat in five years and by how much? Both Ajay and Raghav have produced an equal amount of wheat in five years. Both have produced 150, whatever the unit is. Right? You just had to be a little cautious when you were dealing with, uh, 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 you know, uh, the numbers. That's all. He wasn't asking for any particular year. Okay? Because if, if some of you said 2019, I understood you mis misinterpreted the question in that case. Okay, Rahul says he's the first one to answer. Now, this was a little tricky, I must say. It would have taken you some time to get the correct answer for this. Yes, it was just an eye illusion is what Ayushi says. Fine. All right, Ayushi. Cool. So, we, we are done with this. Can we move on to the next question now? Okay, cool. All right, so this is different. You have a, a different set of data here. The given double bar graph shows number of students who like different colors in grade 6 and grade 7. So this colored bars will represent the data for grade 6 and these colored bars, the mustard color is going to represent the data for grade 7. Difference between most favorable color for grade 6 and least favorable color for grade 7. All right, come on, go ahead and answer this out. Okay, Vandana says she has recovered from chicken pox. She'll be free. All right, so cool. I wished you a speedy recovery. So you see, wishes have come true today. All right, so 80 is, is uh, uh, Shweta's answer. 80 for what, Shweta? Okay, so you've given the complete answer. Well done. Difference between most favorable color for grade 6. Okay, grade 6. Most favorable color means what? The color which most number of students like. So... Which is the tallest pink colored bar here? The tallest pink color bar is here, right? So grade 6, orange color is what most number of students like. And how many students like it? Well, it's falling on 100. So 100 students like orange in grade 6. So both are all right. Shreyasi says both are orange. Least favorable color. Very good. Grade 7, the color which the number of students like least is orange again okay and how many students are we talking about we're talking about 20 very good so we had to find the difference the difference was going to be 100 minus 20 yes 80 is the correct answer very good very good so you see you, you guys are following pretty fine you've understood what a bar graph is how do you uh, interpret the information from bar graph you again understood uh, the double bar graph as well and from yesterday's session i'm sure you've understood mean median mode and range as well so good you see how simple this topic was yeah shweta says she was the first one to answer yeah i remember shweta i believe was the first one to answer to this rahul says she was the second to answer cool cool well done. So we've understood this. Yes, this was again a, a, a moderate level of a question. I wouldn't say this was too simple, but yeah, well done on getting this. All right. Now let's move on to the next. <clears throat> All right. So how many of you can tell me the answer to this question? Who, why do we use a coin to toss? Okay. Here Virat Kohli is saying, I will bat first. And on, on the right hand side, I believe it's the Australian captain Aaron Finch. Uh, he's saying he wants to bat first. So coin toss why do we use a coin toss why do we use a coin toss rahul says to decide arivan says let me decide shweta says settling a dispute or deciding between two or more <laughs> arbitrary options wow that's like a proper definition yeah cool to make no fight is what aruna says all right Yes, you are right. It is Aaron Finch. Thank you, Anirudh. Thank you for, for correcting that. Half chance is what Shruti says. Okay, so no fight, decide. So we leave it to chance, right? Uh, because both these captains want to bat first. So we flip a coin to, to for, for chance or fate to decide it who's going to 
fight it so that both Virat Kohli and Aaron Finch are going to accept it to fate yeah fate, according to fate it was uh, you know Virat Kohli batting or Aaron Finch batting whatever okay so this is what we're going to be studying today chance okay there is a proper mathematical word for chance as well and that's going to be probability and you must have seen this as well right chance describes the likelihood of an event taking place right like when you see a dark cloud you can mostly come to a conclusion that there is a high chance of rain today you don't say that 100% it is going to rain because sometimes you see dark clouds and still it doesn't rain yeah and sometimes you don't even see dark cloud and it, it still it rains yeah so we say this is important here there is a high chance of rain today so you understand what chance means yeah now in this topic what we do is we understand chance from a mathematical perspective okay understanding chance from a mathematical perspective is what we are going to do so i'm going to tell you this what is probability so chance of an event happening you describe it using numbers okay when we say chance is zero uh, uh, we say it is an impossible thing like like the sun rising from the west we know that's not going to be possible at all so we say it is impossible yeah and when the chance we say is one it is going to be certain sure shot like the sun rising from the east we know every day the sun is going to rise from the east so chance is measured as a number between zero and one okay when the probability is zero we say it is impossible when the probability is one we say it is certain yeah and when it is exactly in the middle 0 0.5 what do we say yeah 50 percent it can happen 50 percent it cannot happen like like tossing a coin yeah 50 percent it may be a head and the remaining 50 percent it can be a tail as well yes so this is probability a mathematical term for chance like like uh, anya says there okay so let me give you a proper definition now you've, you've got to understand it guys that probability lies between zero and one it cannot be a negative number it cannot be more than one and this is how you define it probability is number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes i will explain you that there's nothing to worry now i'm sure you guys have seen a die yeah you guys must be playing board games so you know what a die is the numbers on the die how many numbers are there on the die one two three four five six so these are the six numbers which are there on a regular die. Okay. Now, total outcomes is going to mean this. What are the total possibilities? Like when you throw a die, any of these six numbers can come, right? There is a chance one may happen or two may come or three, four, five, six. So we have six possibilities when a die is thrown. So that will represent the total outcomes. So the total outcomes are six now i am going to go ahead and define an event i will ask you now that hey when you are throwing a die what are the chances that you get a multiple of three are you guys familiar with multiple of three what is multiple of three multiples of three are what the three times table yes 3 times 1, 3, 3 times 2, 6, 3 times 3, 9, 3 times 4, 12. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, on and on and on are called multiples of 3. So I am asking you, when you are throwing a dice, what is the probability or what is the chance of you getting a multiple of 3? Multiple of 3, only when you are throwing this dice. So you see any only these six numbers are possible either you get a one or a two or a three or a four or a five or a six No other number is possible out of these six. How many are multiples of three? This is a multiple of three and this is a multiple of three, right? So out of six only two multiples of three that's it well done the answer is going to be one by three Shruti has said it Anita has said it so two by six when you simplify it you get one by three if you want to express this in terms of percentage, you multiply this by 100 and you can say, yeah, 33%, I, I will get multiple of 3. Okay? Now, let's take this same dice. Now, I'm asking you, what is the probability that when you throw a dice, you get a even number, let's say. So, what are the chances of you getting an even number? Total outcomes are how many? 6. Out of these six numbers, which are possible when you throw a die, 
How many even numbers are there? How many even numbers are there? Very good. 1 by 2, Anya. Very good. 1 by 2. 3 by 6 gets simplified to 1 by 2. Very good. Okay. So how many even numbers are there? 2 is an even number. 4 is an even number. 6 is another even number. So out of these 6 possible outcomes, okay, out of these 6 possible outcomes, 3 possibilities connect to an even number. So 3 out of 6, which is 1 by 2. So you can say that when you're throwing a dice, 50% chance is there that you get a even number. Okay, Shruti says she's the first one to answer this. So have you understood the basic definition of a probability? Yeah, come on, let's let's apply this idea to a coin toss. Okay, so when you're tossing a coin, there are only two possible outcomes. You can either get a head or you can get a tail, nothing else. Okay, when you're tossing a coin, only two possibilities are there. Either the coin will throw a head or it will throw a tail, right? So total possible outcomes in both the cases are going to be two. The possibility in which you can get a head, one. So tail again, one. Yeah, so one out of two, which means 50% chance is there for a head, 50% chance is there for a tail. And that is the reason why coin toss is done at the start of every match. All right. Okay, now let me just take this a little bit further. <clears throat> Let's say I'm tossing two coins at the same time. I'm tossing two coins at the same time. I'll first tell you how many total possibilities are going to be there. The first coin head and the second coin head. Okay, this is the first coin and this is the second coin. The first coin can give a head, the second can give a tail or the first can give a tail, the second can give a head or both the coins can give me a tail, right? Now, if I ask you, if I'm tossing two coins together at the same time, what is the chance that I get only one head? Only one head. So total chances are how many? Total chances are four. In these four chances, one head is possible where? It is here and it is here, right? So two by four and I get one by two again, okay? Very good. Very good. Come on, let's move on now. These questions, you will answer this. Which of the following event has a probability equal to zero, which means which is impossible. So out of these four, which is impossible? Earth revolving around the sun. Is it impossible? India winning the next T20 World Cup. Is this impossible? The speed of sound greater than the speed of light. Is this impossible? or the sun rising in the east. Hari says C, Shweta has said B. <laughs> All right, there is quite a big possibility that India may win the next World Cup. We can never be certain about it. All right, that was funny by the way. C is going to be right, right? Out of all the options that I've given you here, because we know light travels faster than sound. Yeah, so speed of sound greater than speed of light, this is gonna be impossible. Yes, so this is, impossible earth revolves around the sun we know that for sure india will win the next t20 world cup nobody knows that right who will win the next t20 world cup sun rises in the east we know it's a certain event yes very good very good come on let's let's try this question now what are the chances of getting a number nine when a dice is thrown you're throwing one dice uh, what is the chance that you get the number nine B is also impossible. Come on, don't be that pessimistic. India winning the T20 World Cup is still possible. I, I go with it. it is a possibility. All right. So this, this, what are the chances of getting a number nine when a dice is thrown? Zero. Yes, impossible. Yeah, because when you're throwing a dice, only six numbers coming is possible. Either you can get a one or you can get a two, three, four, five or a six. That's it. Only these six numbers are possible. There is not a single die with the number nine on it. Yeah, very good. This is impossible. This is impossible because it can be just one of these six numbers. That's it. Very good. Very good. You guys are giving the correct answer. Anshi says, sorry for being late. She was in school. Uh, uh, nothing to worry, Anshi. You will still get it. You know, just watch this video later whenever you get the free time. That's all. 
सर इट इज पॉसिबल इन अ डाई एज आई मेड अप ओके इन अ मेड अप डाई ये इट इज पॉसिबल बिकॉज यू कैन हैव एनी नंबर राइट बट इन द प्रॉपर डेफिनेशन ऑफ अ डाई राइट only these six numbers are there so that's why we call it unbiased die because in a die if you made up you've got to let us know then we will tell you the probability you tell us the numbers we tell you the probability as simple as that right cool now next find the chances of getting an even number when a die is thrown now you guys you you should be able to answer this yeah so these are the six faces that the die can throw a number 1 a 2 a 3 a 4 a 5 or a 6 so what are the chances of you getting an even number when a dice is thrown even number even number hari even number very good 1 by 2 dibyanshi well done shruti says 1 by 2 even number yes 2 4 and 6 are even numbers i hope now you are understanding this yeah because when you are throwing a dice total possible outcomes total possible outcomes are going to be 6 right total outcomes are 6 because it can be 1 it can be 2 it can be 3 4 5 or 6 okay the outcomes favorable to even number are going to be how many either you can get a 2 or you can get a 4 or you okay can get a 6 so there are three possibilities in which you can get a even number out of 6 three possibilities yeah so this simplifies to 1 by 2 very good the correct answer is going to be 1 by 2 well done 3 by 6 is equal to 1 by 2 okay good fair fair enough next okay this is going to be the last question the given double bar graph shows the probabilities of an event happening and not happening like this color tells you the probability of the event happening and this tells you not happening which event has the probability of more than 0.5 more than 0.5 shows the probability of an event happening not happening which event has the prop which event has the probability of happening more than uh, uh, 0.5 okay these should be uh, uh you know the numbers here are not correct okay one unit stands for 10 observations given as a probability more than 0.5 this is tricky event 4 is what you are saying all right for a moment even i got confused here event 4 is what you are saying happening not happening more than 0.5 why does a pizza come in a square box while inside it's a circle we eat it as a triangle oh that's like a very philosophical question pizza comes in a circle we eat it from a triangle box and the slice that we eat not technically a triangle it's a sector but nonetheless all right so event 4 if you are saying look happening let's say 50 not happening let's say 40 yeah total stands for 90 50 out of 90 yeah this is more than 0.5 yeah i agree wherever happening is more than not happening of course that way uh, happening is more than 0.5 well done yeah you didn't need the numbers as well you could have just grabbed the information out of the graph because yeah in event 3 not happening is more than happening in event 1 again both happening and not happening are the same in event 2 happening not happening is the same and in event 1 uh, not happening chance is more than happening so there's only one event where uh, the possibility for it happening is more than not happening very good very good so okay uh, she the diksha says she she did not understand look even i for a moment got confused i must be pretty honest with you here okay so look probability of happening is more than half so out of all these events the probability of happening which is more than not happening only happens here in event 4 right only in event 4 happen is more than not happen i know strange words to use but still yes and this is the reason why it is going to be more than 0.5 okay got it very good come on homework time let's see how many of you can answer this <clears throat> All right so in a survey of 100 ladies it was found that 68 do not like coffee out of these 100 ladies one is chosen at random what is the probability that the chosen lady likes coffee so you've got to understand these kind of things okay if if 68 do not like coffee 
obviously the remaining ones like coffee there's not going to be any neutral answer saying that i don't know whether i like it or i don't like it so if 68 like it the remaining do not like it okay even i got confused for a time i must admit that anirudh yeah but but after some time i got the problem cool so this is going to be simple look 68 if they do not like coffee the remaining ones are going to like coffee okay so you can type these answers in the comments box and the next thing is going to be where I talk about the Baiju's classes to teacher advantage. Okay, so first thing guys, you've got to remember there are 27 video lessons on the app. Now these are designed to help you understand these perspectives, uh, you know, concepts from a multiple perspective. The link to this, you can find it in the descriptions box. Make sure you utilize that. The learning journeys again are going to be personalized. Like I always say, some of you may be good with some topic. If you want to get deeper into that, you should solve hard questions. But if some of if you are not that comfortable with the topic you should start slowly okay baby steps at a time like start with the easy questions because the start always has to be from easy and then you move on to the difficult ones then the dual teacher model of course one teacher is there to teach you the concepts and simultaneously another teacher is present to clarify all of your doubts so make sure you try this out by utilizing the link which is given to you in the descriptions box all right and lastly we come to the end of the session where in case you've liked uh, what we provide you, please hit the like button. It'll mean us a lot. It'll encourage us to continue up, up, you know, coming up with these sessions like this. Share it with your friends as well. Uh, they may find it pretty helpful. Uh, up, you know. And lastly, if we have any new students who are joining us through the video, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also, uh, up, you know, there's a link in the description box. So make sure you join the Telegram channel as well. Okay, so you guys like coffee. I like coffee as well. Awesome. So that's it guys. We've come to the end. I hope you've understood whatever we've tried to learn today. Three things. Yeah. Bar graph, double bar graph and the concept of probability. Okay. And that's it. And then we pretty much two to three minutes. We revise whatever we've covered earlier. Okay. In case you get stuck somewhere, you can always rewatch these videos, solve some problems and then you'll get better at it. Okay. Thank you for your time. Uh, you've been awesome as usual. Thank you for engaging with us uh, through the comments. That means a lot. And until the next time we're meeting, remember to take care of your health, uh, keep practicing. That's how you get better and better. Thank you uh, and bye-bye.